So it's um, uh, the yeah, Besser, um, which means a, a lullaby. Yeah. A little twist in there.
Did you record all this? Yes. Good. Absolutely. So, Marijuan, I was wondering if um, you have any memories of when you were little of spending time with Mani. Mani? Mm, since it's her birthday today. Like the. Yeah. Mani had ways to get around children, you know. She was very adept in all sorts of things. So <coughs> she could get along with children, with older people, be with Baba, and also give company to Mera. She was amazing, I tell you. And uh, my earliest recollections were when we were in Jabalpur and I was in the women's ashram and I had nothing to do all day long. So she would, some, sometimes when she had time, she would come and play with me. Nobody else did it. So she, she was quite a companion like that, you know. And made you feel quite close to her. Yeah. So she would like to see things that I would do. So she, once she was playing with some little dolls, you know how playful she used to be, yeah. So I said I could make some dolls, so I would, and she said, ah, really? As if she was so amazed, and yeah, so I, w I would play around with mud and make little dolls out of mud. And she would come and just say, what a beautiful doll, and, and all that. And, I'd be crazy making those dolls all day long for her. <laughs> yeah, funny children, how children are. But she had this knack of getting into people very close, yeah. And then she was so multi-talented, very good actress, you know. And Perform for Baba so many skits and plays. <clears throat> so while we were in Jabalpur, Baba had asked her to um, uh, make a very special uh, show for her, for him, and uh, that he wanted that to be done, a play depicting all the big leaders of the world at that time. So Baba had told her what, what he liked, what he wanted her to do. So he wanted uh, uh, impersonation and mimicking of all these world leaders during that time. The war was in full swing. So uh, Hitler Mussolini and then Chamberlain and who else I wonder? Stalin? I huh? Stalin? Stalin. Stalin. I don't know if Stalin was there or not. Yeah, but yeah. such leaders and Baba wanted her to do that. Mussolini. She was Mussolini. Mussolini. Okay. I, I said Mussolini. Said Mussolini. Yeah. Don't you Mussolini? So, and Churchill. 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 Yeah. So, uh, she was doing all this and Baba said that no one should see your your rehearsals. You get people to do these things for you. You also take part and do this for me. So <clears throat> every day they would be busy and money would get together all the people that she had selected. So Katie was to become Mussolini 
<laughs> and Mani herself was to become Hitler. And Rano was to be Chamberlain because she was tall and slim. And who else was there? Roosevelt. Roosevelt, I don't, I don't know. But I can't recollect all the oh. characters here. But I remember Money was, did the best of it all. Like Hitler, the great dictator, you know. And she was, and all those uniforms had to be done. And, in, and they, they were all on shoestring budget, you know. So no fancy things. So they had to make do with whatever they had. So to build up Katie, she wasn't so stout then. She was quite slim and good looking and nice. So to build her up, she would had put all pillows all around and <laughs> made her into a quite a fat, plump person that Mussolini was. And she got this sub uniform, I don't know from where, huh? I don't know where, but uh, she got these boots from, I think, Donkin or something. You know, these big gum boots, <laughs> which Hitler would wear those boots. So that and, and a cap and a little stick in her hand. And the moustache. Uh, and a moustache, yeah. So she sort of, I think, painted it here or something. And she really resembled Hitler <laughs> quite, quite well. And did a sort of a dance about how he was playing with the world. There was a balloon that she had prepared and would uh, perform the dance, you know. So all this was done in rehearsal and then Baba asked all of us to come and watch one day. The, all the curtains were removed and all the hush-hush was over and it was a big opening and Baba had all the women there assembled to watch and Baba was there. So Mani came on the stage and performed this beautiful act of Hitler. And uh, uh, and the speech that he would give. So she, of course, didn't know any German language, but she would say it in such a way as if she was really speaking something in German. With all the rough and gruff intonations and, and all the gestures that Hitler was supposed to be doing to inside the masses. And then he did a dance, she did a dance of Hitler sort of feeling so proud that he is going to get the whole world under his, under his foot. So he brings out, she brings out this balloon and pushes it up and then does, starts kicking it up here and there. It is a sort of a world depicting the world, how he was playing with the world. Mm. Yeah. And did a beautiful dance. <laughs> Everybody enjoyed it. Mm. And the way she gave out those speeches that Hitler was inciting the public with, she, that she would do. Mm. And made a nice presentation. Then Katie came on the stage and she was told to act and money would do all the script writing, how to do it and all that. So she was really very talented. Mm -hmm. And when, this, when we saw Katie, everybody had a good laugh, <laughs> all puffed up and big and with a big military coat on her. And what work Baba did, I don't know, yeah. with all this here. Yeah. He, he had some work to do. 
then uh, Rano as Chamberlain and uh, she was told how to act. So an umbrella was in her hand, thin umbrella and how Chamberlain was always with his umbrella. It's the famous cartoon that you would get from Chamberlain mm -hmm. with his umbrella and all these things. Yeah. So it was such a nice performance that Baba then ordered money for the first time to do it for the men monthly. So it was a repeat performance for them the next day. The women were out, but I was in both. Yeah, both I, I could yeah. see both. Yeah. And it was performed before them. Wow. And Baba was in both, both, both the, yeah. Did, did you ever watch any of the rehearsals or only No, the we tried to, but Rano was there as a policeman. <laughs> Get out from here, <laughs> you urchins. <laughs> it would be all behind curtains. Wow. Yeah. Didn't you act once in a play yourself? Yeah. yeah. Then uh, when we were in Bangalore, <clears throat> Mania was to do some concerts when Baba would come back from these mustus. They were hectic mustus in those years. Those were the 1940s. World War II was in full swing. Baba's work was going on. You will read, you'll get some glimpses of it in uh, Donkin's diaries that are going to come out very soon. So it will give you an idea of how Baba was working behind the scenes during the war. And Baba was extremely busy with mus and mus tools and contacting them all over India in crowded trains. So when he would come back, Baba would want relaxation and he had told Mani that when I come back, do perform plays for me to so that I can relax. So Mani would think out all these little plays and do the script writing and the rehearsals and everybody's parts she would con conduct. So she was quite good at all that. And uh, once she said, she came to me, said, Merwan, will you do a little act for Baba. I said, no, 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 no. I was extremely shy. I said, but for Baba's sake, won't you do it? For his sake? Come on. So somehow she cajoled me. To, you have got nothing to do. It's a very simple act. I tell you, you, you won't have much trouble. Just do this. So she took me there up. I don't, I never went upstairs to Bangalore, there was this <coughs> nice palatial building which we were staying, which had been leased out. It was known as the Lynx, which overlooked the golf links of Bangalore. <coughs> I think it must be still there. The golf course, I don't know how much Bangalore has changed now, but at that time it was beautiful. So this Panglo was quite away from the main city in a, in a nice, very aristocratic locality. And this, it, this bungalow overlooked the golf links. That's why it was called the links. And we stayed there. And the person who had built it, it was quite a huge mansion with a ground floor and then the first floor. So the first floor had a huge big hall, I think even bigger than this or what, I don't know. But it was all of uh, wood, Ooh. wooden, wow. yeah, a dance floor. Wow. Yeah. Yes. You had those old time mansions. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a dance floor on top yeah. and bottom we had rooms underneath and we used to stay there. And the women would be up there also and down below. So any anybody walked over on that 
roof would make a terrific sound on, underneath. And Kitty with her high heels and, and Nadine and all the would walk on the floor with their thumping heels. And the, it would be quite a disturbance to us down below. So this big hall was there. <coughs> and it, uh, there were several entrances to it. And uh, that's where these dramas would be performed. So she took, she took me up once there and It used to be a broad staircase to go up, nice wooden staircase winding up, mm -hmm. yeah, inside only, inside the building. Mm -hmm. So we had to climb up and then she took, took us, she took me up there and showed me what to do. So she said, look, you stand out here, out of, out of this door the entrance door in the passageway and when I say boy bring the tea <laughs> then you come with a tray of tea uh, a tea pot and two cups and saucers or in a tray and come to the stage and look I'll be sitting here and you come and place the tray on the ground and then do this sort of bowing in front and she showed me how to do it so she gave me a little bamboo basket uh, just sit, think this is a, a, a tray so uh, and she says this is how you have to do it so I did that she said, now go out and when I call you, come in. So I went out Then she shouted and I came in. Uh, she says, look, put it here, put it here. She said, you put, put it here. That's right. Now do the bowing. So I did that. That's fine, that's all. And then, then sit down and pour tea into the cups and offer them one to me and one to my guests that would be there. You follow? So I said, fine, yes. And then she said, that's all, nothing beyond that. So see how simple it is? So I said, fine. Then when the time came, <coughs> she got all the others to also to get ready with their dresses and all. And for me, she dressed me, uh, gave me a dress of, a, of an orderly, you know. So with all that sash and this and, and a turban and <clears throat> the tray was there and some tea was actually there in the teapot and one, two cups and saucers in the tray and I was holding the tray there and uh, the play started and I was began to shake there <laughs> out in the passageway so, so when she gave the signal and said boy come in so I entered in briskly and <clears throat> first time I saw the hall was all lighted up and Baba was seated there on a divan and all the women beside and uh, th there was no partition or anything just uh, Baba was sitting at one end of the hall and the other end was the stage there was no higher stage or it so I come in and Mani and uh, the guest was sitting there so I look up there and I see Baba there. So I forgot all about money and all. <laughs> so I took the tray shaking like this, you know. Got so such stage fright. There all those people watching me and they were all laughing seeing my dress. 
and uh, all dressed up and shaking and so I got more nervous and instead of giving the putting the tray near money I take it to and put it in front of Baba's couch <laughs> so everybody started laughing all the more and I was looking quite puzzled and confused and money was saying boy <laughs> Come here, here. <laughs> she made an improvised sort of dialogue. Here. Not there, here. <laughs> so I start to pick it up again, and so much more laughter and quite an amusing scene. Yeah. So I brought it there, and then I spilled the tea uh, while pouring it out. The whole cups and saucers were rattling. <laughs> Oh, we had a good big farce of it. You know. oh, Baba must have been laughing. Yeah. So the last, last play you did, huh? huh? Is that the last play you did? First and last. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. Wow. He must so, have really loved it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Baba loved anybody who made mistakes on in the uh, play that he would very much like. Mm -hmm. So this was done, and then I just disappeared from there. And went and hid myself somewhere. So were you embarrassed or were yeah, you pleased? Very much embarrassed and relieved also that it's over. <laughs> it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a scene where my mama was also to play a part. So my mama was dressed up like a very fancy young man. Mm, businessman and, and Naja was uh, a respectable old lady and all sorts of things, very funny thing. And <coughs> uh, Naja was all dressed up like an old Parsi gentleman, you know. And uh, they were these sideburns that were stuck on her and moustache and all that. So <clears throat> what happened was that she was holding a newspaper in her hand, Naja, and uh, sort of reading like old Parsi gentlemen do. So a newspaper in her hand and with all this dressed up and uh, uh, what happened is that while she was reading, one of the sideburns and a part of the moustache fell down, <laughs> <laughs> got unstuck. So she kept putting the newspaper up. And Baba was saying, to gesturing, ask Naja to put that paper down. I want to see her, how to. And she says in, in, lang in her language, Baba, but my, my sideburn and moustache has fallen, but I want to see it. <laughs> put your paper down. <laughs> so she had to put it down and she was quite a sight there with half her moustache and one sideburn down, gone. <laughs> so these things Baba enjoyed more, all these slippages. <laughs> Then, of course, there was one time when they had to perform an African dance that uh, the, so the dance, in the dance were Katie and my sister Manu and all those. So it was a scene of cannibals and they had captured one nice, plump, uh, western woman. <coughs> and she was, had been tied to a stake, and a big pot was boiling. And uh, the Zulu, Zulu tribes, you know, these cannibals, so they, they would perform a ritual. They would the the victim was tied to the post and there would be a fire around 
and so, uh, get the, the the for them the meal was getting ready <laughs> that nice fat plumpy western woman was to be the <laughs> the the thing to be eaten that day <laughs> no it was Irene. Ah. Irene, Irene below. A nice Swiss plump. Girl. Yeah, <laughs> she was plump and nice, good looking, oh. and tied to the Jeez. post. And <laughs> Katie, Manu, and others were all painted black. So much suit and all that that they had a lot of difficulty washing it off. <laughs> so. They had been all painted black and with the Zulu dress, you know, of skirts up to here wow. and those things and, and uh, with uh, spears in their hand. So spears were <laughs> sort of cardboard things with things and they were dancing around the victim and having a nice time contemplating their meal. Yeah. <laughs> so all, all those things were, and Baba had a very good laugh seeing all this. They were all dancing around. No, Irene was there all tied up and looking very forlorn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the pot boiling there. So she would do all these plays here. When when um, they come to Mara, uh, when they come to Guru Prasad, would Baba bring the women over to Bindra House for visits on occasion? Yeah. And would you have? Then, then would you be around go. then? No, we had to get out from the house. Ah. So we there was a garage at the back. So all all the men went there huh. while Baba and the women would be in. So at once you grew up, did you not see Mani then? No, then after not that. In, so then once Baba dropped, when, after Baba dropped his body, yeah, and then, you came here, then yeah. did you start seeing yeah, Mani yeah. then? She would yeah. come to Mani Hall. And would you come to Mandalay Hall and start listening to stories when she'd be here? In Mandalay Hall? Yeah, yeah. Huh. She used to be here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was just trying to figure out. She and Eric used to take her yeah. on Saturdays. I just didn't but, know. But uh, before that, money used to come to Eric. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So at that time, I used to see her. Yeah. Also, they used to come to Bindra House. Yeah. No, no, not then. Look, uh, uh, when the chair, that whole case was going on, she used to come Ah, to then, Bindra then Bindra. that was there. Uh, yeah. so After Baba dropped his body. Mera came out, all the women, until then they were all secluded. Mm, you couldn't see them. Nice. Mera, Mani, Naja, Khorshed, and three or four, they were in very strict seclusion. Mm. Yeah. And when you'd come, when you started making visits to Mera Zah, yeah. um, your monthly visits, would Mani come over and visit with Erich and would you be a part of that? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. she would come to Erich's room uh -huh. and uh, discuss things with him in the morning. So I was staying with Erich in his room itself at that time because Pandu was occupying this room. So I would be with Erich all the time. In that little tin room, you, you stayed no, the in cabin. The, I mean, you stayed in the yeah. cabin with Erich. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, really? Another bed was oh, put there. Yes. When we came here also for quite a few months, I stayed there until Mama died. My mother died here. Then I shifted. Yeah. What kind of things would Mani come to talk about with her? Correspondence, uh -huh. trust matters, because the trust thing was going on, you know. The trust episode was a very sordid affair. Yeah. That's how it was.
and then when you started, when she, when you can when we we all started coming, and Monty was telling stories in the hall. Yeah. Were you hearing some of those stories for the first time then, like what was happening yeah, on the women's yeah. side? I used to listen. Mm -hmm. Erich would talk when the money would they would take turns to talk. Well, that was that was my favorite Saturdays, yeah. and then they talk in Gujarati, uh, and I'd always wish I could understand what yeah. they were saying to each other. <laughs> those were the days. Hello, it's time to go. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Happy birthday, man. Happy birthday, man. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Hi. How are you? Jay Baba Dorothy. We are getting up. No, oh, you're leaving. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Ha ha. Not, nothing I said. <laughs> it's time to go, man. It's been coming, you think, too. Oh.